We are here with the next part of the Rolling Realms, Realms Explained. We are starting the promo packs. We are going to be going in alphabetical order, 10 at a time. So today is a Feast of for Odin, all the way to Dinosaur Island. So basically A to D. Hope you'll join me. And again, look at the, for the timestamps down below if you're looking for a specific realm. Also down below will be links to the other videos that we have done. Let's get started. A feast for Odin. Use a number to fill in an unused shape on one island. Mark the shape used. Or use a six for any shape. Don't mark it used. Rotating slash flipping are okay. Gain benefits from filled squares. Score stars when filling each indicated square. And one star per completed island. So let's just do a practice roll here. We have a two and a six. That works well. So I have two options. One, I can use the two, and I can just say, you know what, we're going to fill in these right here. That would give me a star and a coin, like such, and I would mark that used. Now, say I rolled six in a future turn, my options would then be use any of these, including that two. Again, so I could just use the two, and then get that heart. You'll notice three has two different shapes you can use, so you'll mark off each shape individually when you use it. Four has three different shapes, and five has two shapes. So again, you're going to be looking at crossing off these specific spots, and then also filling in the individual islands. So that is a feast for Odin. Apiary, use a one, two, or three to outline a matching number in the leftmost empty column, or use any number to age all active bees, which means to mark each outlined hex, outline the hex below, and gain the benefit in between. You're going to score one star per strength for bee that ages into hibernation. So let's pretend we jump ahead a few turns. So the first term we rolled a two, so we'll outline this hex here, and then another one we rolled a three. And then we had a one, and then another two. So now what can happen is on this turn, if I roll this, I can use either number and to age them, which means I am going to mark each outline hex and then outline the hex below and gain the benefits. So I'll mark this one off. I'll outline this three and get a pumpkin. I'll cross off this three, go to this four and get a coin, mark this off, age my two, get a heart, mark off this two, go to three, and get that pumpkin. Now in a future turn, I can again age. In that instance, this would go down to the four. Again, a coin. This would hibernate, which gives me a star. This goes down to the three. This goes down to the four. Your goal is to try and get all six rows done and hibernate it down to get your full stars. That is apiary. Architects of the West Kingdom. Write a number from left to right, either in the cathedral or the field. Or mark a number to make a trade. Each trade can be made once. Score stars as shown on the cathedral, field, and trade. So when you write numbers in the cathedral, they need to be decreasing. So you can go 6, 4, 3, 2, 1 if you wanted. Or they need to increase here. So you can go two, four, five, and six. So then you don't get to those three pumpkins. Alternatively, you can use a four, five, or six to do a trade. If you do a five, you'll cross it off. You'll get rid of a pumpkin to get a star. Or a six, you'll spend a pumpkin and a heart for a star and a coin. Easy and simple. That is Architects of the West Kingdom. Arc Nova. Use a number to gain its benefit equal to the number of outlined circles. Then, cross off those circles. At the end of every turn, outline one circle under one rolled die you didn't use in this realm, even if you didn't activate this realm at all. Six counts as any number to use or as an unused number. You're going to score stars as gained from fours and fives. So, if your roll is... A five and a four, and you don't use either one here, you can fill in a five or a four, so we'll just say circle R4. 
Roll again, a five and a five. You don't use a five, so bam. Then if we jump ahead a couple of turns, say we'll have this here, here, and here, and we roll, and we get a five and a six, I can then say, you know what, I'm gonna use the five here. So we cross these off, and that gives us two stars like so. And then I could use the six to fill in any circle, so I'd fill in the four. If you end up using both dice in this realm by, say, use of pumpkins, then you will not fill in a circle on this card. Otherwise, typically at the end of every round, you will fill in a circle. You, however, can skip it in round nine as you won't be able to gain the benefit. The number also has to be used as rolled. You cannot manipulate it, and you cannot use created numbers to fill in here. It is just the rolled dice. So that is how you do Arc Nova. Biddy and Walter. At the start of every turn, mark an outlined cat craving based on the dice sum and gain the resource. Every time you fail to do so for sums of three through 11, outline one grumpy cat. When you activate, assign a number to outline one or two cat cravings. You're gonna score six stars if your cat is perfectly happy. So correct one per grumpy cat. So let's do an example roll here. So we have a four. So we consult our table on the top of three to five wants the food. We look at the food. We cross it out, that is going to gain us a pumpkin. We, when we activate this card, if we assign a one, two, or three, we will outline one. So say I use this one, I would circle this pet bowl. If you have these crossed out, and if we rolled a seven here, we do not have an available circled yarn ball. So we would then instead circle up one of our grumpy cats. So at this point, the most I can get on this one is five stars, or yeah, five stars. So that is Biddy and Walter. Boone Lake, use a number and pay the cost to outline a lever. At any time, you may mark the area below an outlined lever to gain the left benefit. You're going to score one point or one star per outlined lever where you didn't gain the left benefit. So in this instance, I have a two and a five. So I can outline any of these levers, any of these levers, or any of these levers by spending the cost. So this one is free. So we will say we'll go ahead and outline this lever. Then anytime, so hey, say maybe on my turn, I want to do something with coins and I don't have any coins. Well, then you know what? I'm going to cross this out and now I have two coins to be able to do something with. Maybe it's because I rolled this two, and I need those two coins to outline this lever. So I crossed that out, got the two coins, and circled that lever. If at the end of the game I never cross this one out, I will then get this star thusly. That is Boone Lake. Can't stop. Outline a triangle, bottom to top, in a column where you haven't stopped. You may then immediately mark stop in that column. If you do, mark and gain all outlined benefits from that column. You're gonna score marked stars from the columns where you stopped. So as you're going along, you might be crossing this off, crossing this off, going here, going along here, doing this one, doing this one. Oop, did that one first. All right, and then we'll say we roll. We have a four and a six, so then I can choose either mark this six, or maybe I wanna mark this four and choose to obviously stop. I need to stop in the four. I can't at this point choose to stop in the five. So we will then mark stop. We will get a pumpkin and we will get two stars. So again, you, need to, you can only stop in the column with which you are activating, not anywhere on the card. That is can't stop. Crusaders, use a number in an incomplete wedge to gain its benefit. Then, starting in that wedge, fill that number of hexes, one hex per wedge, clockwise. If a wedge is complete, skip to the next wedge, still fill the full number of hexes. So let's do a roll. We have a four and a six. You know what, say I need a pumpkin. So we are going to fill in this hex gain a pumpkin, we've chosen the four, so we have one, 
two, three, and four. Now say instead I had chosen the six and this right here is completely full. Like so. We'll do the six, so we'll go one, two, three, four, five, and back to six. Again, only gain the coin once, even though we filled two hexes in on the six. You're gonna score one star per completed wedge. So as of right now, I have the one completed wedge, which means I would get a star. That is Crusaders. Dice Throne. Use a number to fill any square. When you do, you may also mark at most one of these boxes up here to fill that same number in a different row. Filled squares must match the conditions. Upon row completion, gain the benefit. So your top three rows want the same numbers. That's why there's equal signs. So if this is a two, this would also have to be a two. Say I put a five here. I then could also choose to cross that off and put a five down here because these want two fives and two sixes. This middle row here, no two numbers of the same can be next to each other, but I could go like four, two, four, five if I wanted. Although they do say if you want an extra challenge, try and make them all different numbers. This row down here wants them separated by one, so it'd have to be like one, two, three, and four. Once a row is complete, you will get the denoted thing. So in this instance, I would have five stars a going. So that is it. That is Dice Throne. Dinosaur Island. Use a number to increase the security level by marking up to that number of shields. Or outline a dinosaur to add it to your park, gain the benefit, and attract visitors. The total number of visitors can never be higher than your security level. So you're starting with a security level of seven. You're gonna be scoring a star for every three visitors in your park. There are 18 visitors. So if you get all the visitors, you'll get all six stars. So on your first turn, say you roll and you choose a four. You would go one, two, three, four. Your security level is now 11. So then say you get a six. What you can now do is, you know what? Let's say I wanna, I'm gonna outline this guy on sword guy right here. So I will get a heart and I'll get a coin and now I have four visitors. In a future turn, I have a five. There's a five. Now we're going to outline a little pterodactyl friend here. Again, pumpkin, coin, four visitors. So now I am currently at eight visitors. We'll put eight right there. I can do 11, so at most I can outline this guy. But once I outline this guy and I'm at 11, I would need to increase my security level more before I could outline any more dinosaurs because I am at my security level. And then at this point, having 11, I would be getting three stars because nine is the closest divisible of three without exceeding 11. That is Dinosaur Island. And that wraps it up for this group of 10. Go ahead down below and hit like, subscribe, comment, share, and ringing the bell. By ringing the bell, you'll be alerted to when the next video of me explaining all of the promo realms drops. So, until next time, roll out!